Hello everyone. Once again, thanks for joining us today. My name is Sadra Kesai. I'm the product manager of Assemble System Plain Cloud Solution. Today, I'm very glad to present to you uh, the five key steps to successfully use Plain Clouds on your construction project. Okay, let's uh, briefly take a look at today's agenda. First, uh, I'll briefly introduce Assemble if you're not familiar with Assemble yet. Uh, next, we are going to talk about Assemble BIM Cloud Engine. Uh, it's a completely new offering from Assemble System which integrates Point Cloud solution into your project. Uh, the meat of the webinar will talk about uh, five key steps that helps you successfully use your existing Point Cloud data. Uh, in the end, we're going to have a brief demo and a Q&A section. With Assemble, we have the ability to publish your project from different authoring software, federating them, managing them, and also have access to your data from anywhere without having in a specific software or uh, needing a BIM expert. This is uh, very critical. At Assemble, we call it like three step, uh, publish, manage, and share. Now, moving on to Assemble BIM Cloud Engine, for short, uh, it's BCE. Extending your ability to uh, add point clouds files and combine the fill data with BIM. Point cloud files can be coming from handheld scanners, that is dot product or Lenovo or Asus Fablet, uh, or tripod scanners. Uh, tripod scanner, we're all familiar with them like Faro, uh, Leica, ZNF, and etc. But combining both point cloud and BIM uh, all in the cloud now gives us an ability for everyone to have access to as-built data aligned to the design model. This is an evolutionary product from Assemble Systems since traditionally the point cloud data were huge and sharing and viewing them uh, needed a lot of time and expensive software. Now with Assemble VCE, uh, not only we have the ability to view and share all of these points uh, on a cloud-based uh, web-based service, but also uh, align them to BIM to generate a valuable reports. Those reports can be uh, used by field engineers, project manager, or owners. Let's take a look at some of these workflows. Uh, deviation reporting uh, is comparing the BIM to the points. Uh, it can be used for slab flatness or elevator shaft to make sure that nothing is blocking the elevator. Uh, brushing and selecting your point cloud and create a different layers is basically using point cloud as CAD object. Clash detection is another workflow uh, to compare your uh, as-built or filled condition to the new design and make sure there is no clashes. Uh, demolition planning and sequencing is another uh, workflow that we can utilize. Uh, making sure that all the objects that need to get out of the sites will have a free pass. Uh, progress reporting and change management would be next, uh, tracking of what's happening and what is changed on the site. And last but not least, having the point cloud and the BIM together in one viewer uh, to share with, uh, with your team members. So the first step to initially start point cloud and to utilize them is understanding what point cloud can do for you. Uh, in many companies, educating the project manager or the field engineer is the first step. Uh, in a lot of larger projects, the point cloud are essential or requirements for uh, the job. But this data uh, is often not used to its full potential. So understanding what point cloud is and what can do for us uh, as a field engineer or a project manager is the first step. There are items that is listed here, the change detection, tracking construction, uh, defect or inspection or a document site condition. The second step after understanding what the advantage and benefits of Point Cloud is, identifying your company work process and reports needed. Uh, what are the daily and weekly reports that we need? Uh, can we automate them? Like for example, a progress report that we might need to have it every week or every day. Can we use our Point Clouds uh, to show us what was installed? Uh, can we approve a subcontractor bill for installed item using the Point Cloud and knowing that 100% uh, of the item that is listed is actually installed or it's installed correctly. Do we need to go on our construction site and inspect new installs? Is it something that we can use and call our field engineer or field crews and say, 
okay, Average installs, just go and scan it and send the file back to me or share the file back to me. Uh, now I have the means and the tools to know that if it's installed correctly and if there is any inspection needed, I'll run the report from here. How much accuracy do, do we need for a scan? So if we are on the industrial side, that might be a different answer than a commercial side. On the industrial side, it's usually sub-millimeter accuracy uh, and on the uh, commercial construction is a bit more forgiving. So answering those questions is very essential for us. Uh, how are we managing RFI? Can we integrate RFI now with a point cloud uh, alliance with BIM? Uh, now we have the ability to visualize and see if there is any problem and if you're creating RFI, can we integrate that uh, RFI solution into our viewer? Uh, these are the questions that we, if we identify it, we can fully uh, take advantage of the data that we are capturing. Now we need to plan our scan. We want to say no before you go. We have to know what is our objective. By knowing our objective, now we can decide, do we need a handheld scanner or uh, do I need a tripod scanner? Uh, what quality do I need? Does it, does it have to be like color scan or gray scale? Uh, Handheld scanner, of course, are used for smaller areas or uh, to complement the tripod scanners. For the areas that the tripod scanner might not reach, uh, we use handheld scanner. Uh, and handheld scanner also is much more portable and uh, they're not as expensive as tripods. So knowing our objectives plus uh, to understand what type of equipment do we need. Uh, creating safe views of a scanning area in Assemble. So what is safe view? Why do we need to have those safe view? It's a part of planning. So if you're going on a site and usually the sites, if it's refinery, if, even if it's a commercial construction, there's like huge areas and the models are very big. But we are scanning only a part or a section of that area. So we can create a safe view in Assemble that means essentially filtering the data to the area of interest. So having that area of interest and save it, Assemble will give you the ability to just go over your data and know where you want to scan. Next step for us uh, is always walk on the job site before arriving with your equipment and rise yourself uh, with the site. Uh, this is also very essential, especially before pouring a concrete or after uh, pouring a concrete. Uh, you want to scan, you want to know what is the, the situation, where, do, where can you put your scanners. Knowing that what each team member needs before the scan is very essential. Always we have to consider safety, uh, that what comes first. Uh, before starting a scan, now we know where we are and now uh, we have actually the BIM model and the design model in a safe view of the area that we want to scan. So we have uh, a good idea of what we want to do. But what is also important before starting the scan is uh, locate your site control and place your targets. A target gives you the ability to add the coordinate, the right coordinates based on the survey controls uh, to your scan. This is important for registering your scan or aligning your point cloud to the BIM. Uh, by placing your target and making sure that you can use them on a multi-day job, uh, you're uh, safeguarding your accuracy of the data. Let's go to step number four. Now that we have our model and now we have our scan, what is the next step? Creating visual deliverables. Uh, this is what we might not have before. So if we were creating an RFI, if we were creating a list of the item that needed to be removed, if we had a list of the clashes, uh, did we have a visual deliverables or that visual deliverable was easy for us to share it with, with our entire team? This is what we want to do with our point cloud data. Like for example, in the picture uh, here, these are the items that need to be removed. All the point clouds are in red. It's like limited to those points and we know where do they clash with the new design. So attach your reports to the object. That means that if you have, for example, a slab flatness, uh, you want to attach that uh, report, uh, attach that heat map, attach the cell file to that object. So every time you go, for example, to the third floor and you want to know the information about the concrete pour, you can easily load your point cloud, you can load uh, the heat map, which is associated with data slab and have all the data in one place. 
create an RFI with the point cloud and BIM model. If there is a problem uh, with the clashes, if there is a problem with the installs, or if there is a problem with the concrete pour, you can just right there create an RFI and share it with the design team or share it with the rest of the subcontractor or the crew member and ask them for more information. QA, QC install is another uh, type of visual data that you can have now that you have your point cloud and the BIM model together. Uh, so all of these are creating a visual report for us uh, that enable or project manager, owner, and field engineers to do their job much better than before. Now uh, we have the data, uh, we have the reports, we need to share them. So sharing is very important for us, sharing the full site scan uh, with the owner uh, as they want to see what is the progress, uh, what was installed, uh, how much uh, how many percent complete are we on this site or usually like it's not even one site uh, in a bigger project they might have to control or manage around like 10 to 50 different site they want to have a dashboard and see okay on that side and that section we are good we're complete let's uh, go to the next site instead of just moving and driving and get to those points so sharing those file and reports are very important for us uh, sharing the save views and reports with the subcontractor sharing all the clash and demolition sequence with the field crew all on the cl cloud sharing the reports and as well data for the team decision and share the action items making uh, our job faster and more optimized. So now that I know that my new design is clashing with that uh, object on the site, now that I know that my uh, concrete pour has a problem, now that I know that I don't have a problem and actually my subcontractor installed everything correctly, what is my next action item? Then now you have the right information to decide what do you want to do next. This is to a scan and we want to make sure or uh, understand what was the new design or what was the new install uh, versus what was taken out or removed from these two scans. Uh, so as you see I have two scans before and after. Uh, I want to select the uh, scan before I want to come to change management tool and uh, so the change management looks through all the scan and figure out what is different uh, than the other scan. So it's reading all the points in my scan and identifying what was removed or what was added in my scan and uh, it's going to show me uh, what is the difference. So now if I turn the layer on, just removing this, just want to show what was removed and what was added. So in the red you see the extracted demolished area. And in the blue, you can see extract new construction is just the new construction. So this was added and this was removed. Uh, if there is a question, you can create markers uh, and ask a question and share it with the rest of your team or create an RFI. Now you want to share this uh, with the rest of your team, ask for more information. This is uh, the publishing area. Uh, I have already like signed in to my Assemble with my credentials, so I have my credentials and email and I have the list of all the uh, sites and the project that I have. Uh, so this is where it's going to get published. Uh, so now you here you choose the resolution or the quality of the points that you want to share and hit create and upload. Uh, it's very interesting that the amount of optimization events on a point cloud is huge because now you you have the ability to see the points which are usually point clouds file as I was mentioning were very big but it's for sharing us sharing these points now takes a matter of seconds. Now you can see a preview of what's going to be published uh, why these pipes were removed uh, or if there's any comment here this is a new construction and just go through it it looks good to me so I'm gonna publish it. So I'm gonna upload this file hit upload and now it's uh, within my site. So let's go to symbol where this uh, project is published and take a look at it. So this is, uh, if you're not familiar with the symbol or how it looks, this is a symbol uh, site or a web service. Uh, after you publish your project, your CAD or Revit, uh, Smart Plan, CAD works, uh, you'll have a list of the model that you published and also you have the save view. This is the area that uh, we scanned and you can open up the save view which is filtering the models 
uh, to the specific area. Now you have your inventory, which shows uh, the co quantity of the, the items that you have. If you have a pipe, a wall, you have all the quantities and also the 3D model. In addition to the 3D model, uh, if you select an object and go to properties, we can see there is two types of properties uh, here. One is assembled properties and the other is model properties. Model properties comes from the authoring software, either from is it Revit or AutoCAD. There are sections in the model property that we cannot change because there are the dimensions, we don't want to change that. But in assembled properties, this is the the data that you can add. If you have a bid package, if you had a cost code, now there is a new set of data that we added. Just to have more room, I want to close the inventory and see only the 3D model. Now in my 3D model, I, I want to choose, so for this uh, slab that I chose, uh, I want to see the whole scan. I want to see what is the point cloud associated to this area. So the point cloud is going to get loaded first and after the point cloud we're going to have the BIM model. Uh, we have the list of all the reports that was published, change management, fair risk scan, tango scan, dot product scan, uh, slab flatness and different views. So let's take a look at this scan. So now we have a full view of the BIM model aligned to the point clouds. You can dive in and walk into your site without actually being in your site and see what is the deviation. Or let me see, I want to see the slab flatness. Uh, slab flatness reports, let's load that. <clears throat> so it's another uh, benefit. You can, uh, so this was also like the change management. Uh, this is uh, a report that you published. You can publish from or desktop piece. So you have seen this and said, okay, uh, what happened to the change management? I published a report for change. Uh, let's load that. Now you're looking at, let me see, oh, so there is a question why this was removed and if it, if it was addressed to somebody, that person could have uh, actually came and uh, type in an address in a comments, uh, in a comment section or issue in comments right here. And you, could, you can easily track what is happening on your site.